Well, we're on to part two of our book funnel. Today we're gonna look at uploading books, landing pages, and get into certified mail today. So you can send out those art copies and set up those pages for people to start downloading your book. Um, if you like the content that you see here today, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. So let's go ahead and get started. Creating books is super easy. One of the easiest things you can do, it's gonna list all of your books here, how many downloads those books have, when it was created. So I'm gonna go here and we're just gonna to go to action and we're gonna to go to add new book. We're gonna enter in a book name a book label if you want to. The book label is just basically what the label is going to be um, for you. Your readers don't see the book label, but you can put the, you know, Shattered Empire ARC copy or something that's just for you so that you know what book it is. And then here is your author name. Obviously, if you have more than one pen name, make sure to select the right pen name. And then what book type it is, um, whether it's a teaser, a short story, samples, previews, anything like that. You can insert like, like series details. You can even put in the Amazon ASIN if you wanted to, a book tagline, a book description, and even a note to readers. I don't do any of those things. Um, I literally do these top four <laughs> and I just kind of leave it be. So you can include a KF8 Mobi format. Basically what the KF8 Mobi format is, is it's 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 doing two of your books like on top of each other. And in some cases, this can mean that readers will get a better type of your book. Like they'll be able to see your book better because of the fact that you have to remember that when it goes from um, like vellum into book funnel and then somebody downloads it onto their Kindle. Sometimes the formatting is going to be a little off because it hasn't been properly sent through a formatting designer um, by like KDP or anything like that. So a lot of authors will find that they'll format in vellum, but they'll send a copy to themselves, open it up on their Kindle on their phone, and they'll see like the big like drop case W is a little off or something like that. That's completely normal. That is not what your final product will look like, but it has to go through KDP's formatting when you when you view documents on a Kindle. And you're not, you're literally just sending a document to your Kindle and it's not getting properly formatted or or done through proper coding in order to make it look like it's supposed to on vellum but once you upload it to kdp it'll it'll be perfectly fine it's just because it's going through this process if you upload the kf8 mobi please be aware that some people might not be able to download it it does double your file size it is extremely excruciatingly painful to download and unless somebody has amazing internet and tons of storage i don't recommend it so we're going to create book and it's going to bring you here and we're just going to upload a cover here. Find a cover. And then we're going to upload our book files. I'm just going to choose one that I have here. And I'm just going to do one, but I recommend I'll show you here with Enzo. Nope, I didn't do it for that one. Here we go. Um, th this is the generic EPUB and the Kindle EPUB. If you're sending out ARCs, I recommend that you do both because not everybody can do um, just Kindle and then everybody can do just generic. So we're gonna leave that a minute to upload. It is gonna take a second to compile. And basically what it's doing is you uploaded this Kindle EPUB file and they're gonna try and pop out their own generic EPUB. But I, like I said, it's better if you do it on your own um, so that you get better quality. And sometimes it doesn't always allow people to download the book funnel generic EPUB. And then it's gonna turn it into a legacy Mobi. Um, and this is, this is completely normal. It's going to automatically do it. Um, and for people who need it still for their sending it to their Kindles, I do not recommend uploading a PDF format. And I'm going to tell you why, because of the fact that, um, the way that it is compartmentalized and put their coding and sent to readers, a good, probably around, you'll find 75%, maybe more of your readers will not be able to open it 
on certain things. They might not be able to open it on their Kindle. Um, they could probably do a tablet, but a phone, it's too, it's going to be too small for them to read. Um, so it's, it's not going, they might not be able to like read it or they have to keep like, you know, zooming in and not being able to fully do everything. And then they're, they're not going to want to read it or they're going to have an issue, you know, um, with it and then they're not going to tell you and then you're not going to get the review that you want. So those are ready. When it says ready, that's when you'll have access to everything. So for watermarking, everything gets a hidden watermark. Um, you can choose to do a visible watermark if you want to, you know, where to apply it to. I never really bother with that. Um, or you can do PDF stamping if you have a PDF. You can also in, um, enable ebook samples in your settings, and you can include a sample for this ebook when you send it to people um, for your sales pages and your sign up pages. I don't do that, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I would just, you know give them the whole book, uh, more, more people are reading to do that than like they read your sample and then don't want to get it. Um, and that's all you have to do to upload a book. So we're going to move on to, um, I mean, that's about it. So we're going to move on to landing pages here now that that's all done. And we're going to create a quick landing page. So we're going to go to action and add new landing page. So which book do you want to create? So make sure you select the book that you want to create. It's alphabetical, not by current. And then you have to decide what you want to do. And these all have videos um, on like how to do it or like how it works. So you can collect an email sign up page to collect new readers. Um, this is basically anybody who comes in to get your book. They have to put in their email and they are opted in, automatically opted in for your newsletter. That is how it works. They will be warned in that. You can do a simple download page without email collection. This is something that they just come in and they click on it and they get it. Simple, easy, free. I do I do that a lot. Um, a sales landing page that sends readers to other bookstores to buy your book. If you are a wide author, this is amazing for you to have this here so you can just like, it's all in one place. Um, and then a restricted land, a landing page for current subscribers. Um, Readers will basically be asked for their email address and the book funnel will confirm that they are actively subscribed to one of your integrated lists before allowing them to download the book. Um, and that's for like your mailing list, for your Patreon, anything like that. That's where that is going to go. So we're just going to create a simple download page. And this is how you would do it if you're creating an ARC. And you got the, if you got the $20 a year and you don't have access to certified mail, this is where you're going to go. And so you're going to create a download page name. And so I'm going to put shattered, I'm going to actually, I'm going to put test, test, arc link. When you want this to expire, if you are doing an ARC copy, I suggest that you do put an expiration date so that they can't keep downloading your book for free, decide they don't want to, re like, like, maybe it's like three weeks after, and then they're like, oh, I still have access to this link. How great is that? And then they get your book basically for free without having to review it. Um, so you can set up an expiration date and a download limit. You can also set a download limit. You have 50 ARC people and you want to say, okay, 50, each person gets a chance to do it once, or you can even get a little leeway because some people have to download it twice. Like they download it on their iPad and then they download it on their phone or something like that. And then this is where you can see the landing page. And again, in the overview, I showed you where you can go and customize this for you. Um, or you can go in and customize this for it. It's going to show you what it looks like on all platforms. And then, of course, any of the advanced setting, um, this offer has expired for your expired page. The demo limit for this has been reached. You can put in like a Facebook pixel ID, um, but it, it's for it's like basically for your ads manager. You know, you can do an event, things like that. So then you just save that download page. You go back to download pages, click this reader link, and then copy to clipboard and paste it wherever you want to in your ARC group. Or if you send out a big giant email to all of your ARC readers, here's the download link. Have fun. I hope you like it. Don't forget to review. Um, and I'll show you guys how to set up a newsletter specifically just for that um, in another video. Okay, so that's easy. That's books and landing pages. Um, next, we're going to move on to certified mail. 
So certified mail, this is how you do an ARC campaign. And I talked about this in the overview, is when you do um, a, a certified campaign, it's gonna show you exactly who gets the book and if they viewed it and if they downloaded it. As you can see, every single person gets an individual code. And you can say something like, hey, I didn't get it, or I can't find it anywhere. Hit resend. Make sure that they're checking their spam mail. I always put that in my email. Hey, guys, don't forget. Check your spam. Um, so this tells me, you know, which ones were sending successfully. Um, which ones, like starting ending summary, finished ending summary. These are all the follow-ups. Um, that's going to tell me everything about it. So we're going to go to action. Oh, sorry. We're going to go to certified mail and then we're going to go to action and create new campaign. And then you're going to name this campaign name. So my campaign name is test, test, arc link. So you can have this campaign send immediately. You can have it send in the future and you select the date. Um, how long should your readers have to download it once they receive it? I give anywhere from a week to two weeks. It really depends on how close to the date I am sending it out. Um, so if I am sending it out close to the release date, um, like I only give them a week. If it's going to go past the release date, I only give them a week. I'm releasing my next one on October 3rd and my book doesn't come out until the 20th. Um, so I'm going to give them two weeks to do it. And this is where you put your email addresses. So depending on how you had them sign up, um, what I normally do is if it's in like a, um, a Excel or like Google Drive, like because you did like an interest form, um, then I would just take all of the emails and copy and paste them into here. Check the addresses to make sure that there are um, any invalid ones, which is really great. And you just copy and paste, it'll do all of the work for you. And then, so you're gonna put like, here's your copy of, this is the title when it has, don't mess with this part because this automatically puts the title of the book in there for you. Um, ready to review, um, it's ready for you to read and review. Anything after that you can add if you want to. Um, the mail body below the download link will all say this. It'll have your name here. Um, you can send a copy to yourself, uh, test email, and then it'll show you what the, um, oh, what the landing page will view. Don't forget to actually select a book um, up here in books to, Book to Send. Um, so you can select and preview what the landing page will look like. And then I always send a reminder email halfway through the campaign. And this reminder message, I when I put in here, oh, you know, thank you for downloading the ARC, blah, 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 blah. Um, here are the review links. Um, and so this will send it seven days into the campaign. And then I always still like send a follow-up email when the readers can review. I set the follow-up date manually. So if I'm sending out my ARC on the 13th and my book releases on the 3rd, I'm going to make sure to do it two days before and say, don't forget to like review, please. Um, you know, it's follow up email subject and things like that. You can put the instructions with more links in it if you want to. And then when you're all done, you say, I'm already down here in the bottom right hand corner towards the or left hand corner towards the right. Um, and then you can schedule the campaign or you can save it as a draft. Um, and once you schedule the campaign, it'll send it out for you. It's not going to do it because I don't have any email addresses, um, but it'll send it out for you and you're all set to go. It usually, if you schedule the campaign right away, it usually sends out within a half hour. Um, so you can just be like, hey guys, ARCs are out. They're going to be to you in the next half hour um, is usually how long it takes. Um, or you can wait a half hour and say, hey guys, ARCs are live. Um, it's really up to you on how you do that. So I'm just going to hit cancel. And that's it for certified mail. It's pretty easy. Um, I, I get like 500 a month to send out and I, I know where I don't, I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> so uh, if you're releasing 500 books, go you in a month. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing. 
Um, so gift books is another one, like I said, that's pretty easy. You're just going to email gift link. Um, and then you can actually generate a code, which is kind of cool. Um, but I usually just do email the gift link. You put the email, the name of the person, the email, you select which book you're going to give them. It's just going to do a book funnel default one, a gift for you. You can download the link. Remember, don't mess with these title ones. Um, and it's going to do it. And then you press email book and it'll tell you here, um, whether or not, um, they opened it and viewed it or anything like that. And if I remember correctly, I believe, yeah, the these are automatically 14 days. If they don't open them in 14 days, that's not my fault. Um, I might sometimes, like, send one again, especially if it's a new person um, and they're not, like, one of, one of my readers. Um, and I'm like, I didn't see it. It must have probably been in their spam. I'll do it another time. If they don't open that one either, I'm not sending a third one. Because <laughs> um, then I'm getting suspicious of, like, like, did you check your spam? I told you to check your spam. Um, okay. So that is actually really about it for book funnel. Like that's really all you need to know. Um, like in depth for book funnel, all of the other things. Um, if you want to do those, I can't show you cause I can't sign up for any of them. Um, but it's, it's pretty cool. Check it out. Definitely check out the author swaps and the group promos. If you signed up for one of the higher, um, the higher, uh, tiers, um, because they're, they're really good. Um, they're really, really good. And some of these can really help you like with Barnes and Nobles, um, and, and things like that. So I, it's, it's really exciting and I hope you guys